Audiobooks Tube is glad to produce, publish, and offer. Only video on subconscious mind, power of subconscious mind. By Sage D. Esso Treasure. Imagine walking into a doctor's office when you're feeling unwell, and after examining you, the physician scribbles something on a piece of paper, a prescription. You hold it, glancing at the scrawl with curiosity, trying to make sense of the jumbled letters. As you walk to the pharmacy, you wonder what it means and how it connects to your aching head, your sore throat, or your upset stomach. You try to decipher the prescription but quickly give up. It's written in a language you don't understand, possibly Latin, and it leaves you feeling more confused than enlightened. You might eventually shrug your shoulders and trust the doctor, assuming their knowledge is beyond your reach. But, if you could step behind the pharmacy counter and watch as the pharmacist translates the doctor's cryptic note into something as simple as a bottle of peppermint oil or castor oil, you'd likely chuckle at how much effort went into making the whole process feel so complicated. The truth is, sometimes professionals wrap simple things in mysterious language to maintain their status and the air of expertise. It's not just medical professionals who do this, scientists, musicians, and even academics often obscure their knowledge behind complex jargon. Many musicians, for example, will choose to play intricate compositions for their peers, ignoring the fact that their audience might prefer a simple, heartfelt melody. Writers, too, sometimes craft their work for a select group of intellectuals, neglecting the needs of everyday people. The result? Most people are left out, unable to engage with what could otherwise be accessible, helpful information. The unfortunate reality is that while life's challenges, worry, fear, grief, and sorrow, press down on the average person, much of the advice that's out there is too complex to be useful. Books and lectures on subjects like psychoanalysis often seem written for experts rather than for those who are truly in need of help. When someone turns to these resources for comfort or guidance, they might feel as though they're reading a prescription they can't understand. They try their best to follow along, but in the end, they're left with the same problem they started with. The solution to this disconnect is clear, it's time to translate profound, complex truths into plain language that everyone can understand and use. In a world where scientific knowledge, particularly about the mind and the subconscious, has advanced rapidly, there's no reason to keep these insights hidden behind difficult terminology. Everyday people deserve access to this knowledge so they can apply it to their lives in meaningful ways. What's needed is a guide that explains how the subconscious mind works in clear, simple terms, without sacrificing scientific accuracy. Just as a prescription can be written in everyday language, so too can explanations about the mind. For instance, the subconscious mind has a profound impact on your health, relationships, and happiness. Yet, this aspect of yourself often operates beneath your awareness, much like an iceberg floating in the ocean. You see only the tip of the iceberg, the part that rises above the water, which represents your conscious mind. The majority of the iceberg, however, lies below the surface, unseen. 
This hidden part is your subconscious, quietly influencing your thoughts, actions, and even physical health. Understanding the subconscious can help answer some of the most perplexing questions about human behavior. Why are we sometimes so different in our dreams compared to our waking selves? Why do joy and success seem to cure certain ailments, while stress and unhappiness can lead to illness? Why do we sometimes fall deeply in love with someone at first sight? only to find that the intensity of those feelings fades over time. The answers to these questions lie in the way the subconscious mind interacts with our conscious experiences. For example, the subconscious often holds on to emotions, memories, and desires that we might not be fully aware of. These hidden aspects of ourselves can manifest in dreams, in unexpected emotional reactions, or even in physical symptoms like illness. When we understand how our subconscious influences our lives, we can start to make positive changes, whether that means improving our relationships, finding greater success in our work, or achieving better health. Take, for instance, the common experience of falling in love. Many people report feeling as though they've known their partner from a past life, or they believe in the idea of love at first sight. This intense connection is often a sign that the subconscious mind is at work. It recognizes certain qualities in the other person that align with deep-seated desires or needs, even if those desires aren't immediately clear to the conscious mind. As the relationship develops, however, the intensity of those feelings might change as the conscious and subconscious begin to align or clash. Similarly, feelings of anger, fear, or sadness can often stem from subconscious influences. Have you ever found yourself suddenly irritated over something seemingly trivial, or have you ever forgotten someone's name even though you know it well? These are just a few examples of how the subconscious can disrupt your conscious experience. While the conscious mind might focus on day-to-day -day tasks and surface-level concerns, the subconscious is always working in the background, guiding your emotions, thoughts, and actions based on past experiences and deeply held beliefs. The subconscious also plays a role in shaping our attitudes toward money, success, and fulfillment. Many people struggle financially, not because they lack talent or opportunity, but because their subconscious mind holds limiting beliefs about wealth and success. These beliefs might come from childhood experiences, societal expectations, or past failures, but they can be difficult to identify and change without understanding how the subconscious operates. By learning to recognize these hidden influences, people can begin to reprogram their minds for greater abundance and satisfaction in life. In essence, the subconscious is like a vast reservoir of potential, both positive and negative. It can drive you toward your goals or hold you back, depending on what's been stored there over the years. The key to unlocking this potential is learning how to communicate with your subconscious, much like learning to translate a prescription written in a foreign language. When you understand the hidden aspects of your mind, you can start to take control of your life in ways that once seemed impossible. In conclusion, the mysteries of the mind don't need to remain mysterious. 
just as nature performs miracles in simple, everyday ways, the most profound truths about human behavior and psychology can be understood by anyone. It's time to bring these truths down from the lofty heights of academia and science, where they've been shrouded in complex jargon, and make them accessible to everyone. By doing so, we can empower individuals to heal themselves, improve their relationships, and achieve their goals, all through a deeper understanding of the subconscious mind. The mind is like a river, flowing constantly with thoughts and experiences. On the surface, we have our conscious mind, the part of us that is aware, actively thinking, reasoning, and making decisions. This is the part of your mind you're using right now as you read these words, taking in information and forming judgments. It's the part that handles the mundane tasks of daily life, reacting to what's happening around you, planning your next move, and engaging with the world in a way that seems immediate and direct. Yet, beneath this conscious layer lies something much deeper, the subconscious. The conscious mind, the part we think we know so well, is only a small fraction of the total mind. Much like the tip of an iceberg, the conscious mind floats above the water, visible and obvious. But underneath the surface, the vast bulk of the iceberg remains hidden, just as the subconscious remains out of our direct awareness most of the time. This subconscious mind holds on to every experience, every thought, every feeling, storing them away like treasures, or sometimes like weights dragging you down, ready to resurface at any moment. Your subconscious is like an enormous storehouse. It collects memories, emotions, and impressions both those you were aware of at the time and countless others you were completely oblivious to. Every experience leaves a trace in your subconscious. Even sensations you didn't notice at the moment, like the faint smell of flowers during a walk or the distant sound of a bird chirping, are tucked away, to be called upon later in life influencing your behavior in ways you may never consciously understand. This hidden part of your mind explains why we sometimes do things that seem out of character, or why we might feel a certain way without knowing exactly why. The subconscious doesn't think or reason like the conscious mind does. Instead, it feels and reacts based on all those stored impressions. It's not concerned with the minor details of your day-to-day -day life. Instead, it focuses on the big picture, the overall direction of your life and your deepest desires. When you react to something without thinking, when you instinctively respond to a situation, that's often your subconscious at work. Imagine that your mind is like a houseboat floating on a vast ocean. Every thought, every feeling, every experience is like a drop in that ocean. Some of these drops sink into the water and begin to grow, just like seeds in fertile soil. Some seeds sprout beautiful plants enriching the ocean's surface with vibrant colors and pleasant scents. Others grow into weeds, or even toxic plants like poison ivy, capable of causing harm. Still others may become debris, junk floating aimlessly in the water, thoughts and feelings that seem insignificant, but which clutter your mental landscape all the same. Everything you do, everything you think, affects what grows in the ocean of your subconscious. 
Every careless thought or unkind word can sink beneath the surface, only to rise again later, influencing your behavior in ways you can't always predict. The subconscious mind holds on to everything, processing and storing it all. Over time, the subconscious becomes like a stranger living in your own skin, guiding your actions without your full awareness. You might say or do something and later think, that wasn't me, but in a way, it was, it was just the part of you that you don't see, working in the background. This hidden force can be incredibly powerful. It can make you forget the names of people you know well, or cause you to say things you didn't mean to say. It can twist your intentions, making you behave in ways that surprise even you. Have you ever been in a situation where you plan to say one thing, but something entirely different came out of your mouth? Or perhaps you found yourself making the same mistakes over and over, despite your conscious efforts to do better? These behaviors are not accidents. They are the result of subconscious patterns, habits formed from past experiences and buried emotions that you may not even realize are there. For example, one famous actor once shared a story about his strange relationship with social events. He found that when he was invited to dinners with people he didn't particularly care for, he would unconsciously jot down the wrong date on his calendar, always marking the event for the day after it was supposed to take place. Time and again, he would miss these engagements, only to be reminded later that he had gotten the date wrong. After reflecting on this curious habit, he realized that his subconscious desire to avoid these gatherings had been influencing his actions all along. On the other hand, when he was invited to spend time with close friends, he would often arrive a day early, eager to attend. This actor's experience is not unique. We all have similar moments in our own lives. Think about how easy it is to be on time, or even early, for events we look forward to, but how difficult it can be to muster enthusiasm for obligations we dread. This is another example of how the subconscious mind exerts its influence, subtly shaping our actions based on deeper, often hidden motivations. Your subconscious is also the vault where all your memories are stored. It holds on to everything you've ever seen, heard, or learned, even if you can't recall those things on demand. Have you ever tried to remember a piece of information, only to find that it eludes you, slipping just out of reach? Yet, later, when you've stopped actively searching for it, the memory pops back into your mind as if it had never left. That's the work of your subconscious, retrieving information from the depths of your mental ocean. This memory vault operates constantly, even when you're asleep. In fact, the subconscious is often more active when the conscious mind is at rest. You've likely experienced this if you've ever woken up in the middle of the night, suddenly remembering something important. Or perhaps you've managed to wake up right on time, without an alarm clock, because your subconscious knew you had to catch an early train. While the conscious mind sleeps, the subconscious remains ever vigilant, processing, storing, and sometimes solving problems while you rest. Understanding this hidden part of your mind can give you incredible insight into your own behavior. The key to making meaningful changes in your life, whether that means improving your relationships, 
overcoming fears, or achieving personal goals, lies in tapping into the power of your subconscious. By becoming more aware of the thoughts and feelings that shape your subconscious, you can begin to take control of the iceberg beneath the surface. Ultimately, the subconscious mind is like a fertile garden. With the right care and attention, you can cultivate it to grow the thoughts, habits, and behaviors that will lead to a happier, more fulfilled life. But just as in any garden, neglect can allow weeds and harmful plants to take root. It's up to you to tend to the garden of your subconscious, planting seeds of positivity and self-awareness that will yield the kind of life you truly desire. Imagine drifting off into a deep sleep in the middle of a busy hospital ward, surrounded by the noise of footsteps, medical equipment, and chatter. A nurse might sleep through these sounds, but wake up instantly at the softest whisper from one of her patients. Similarly, a mother can sleep through many disturbances but will wake at the faintest sound from her sick child. This is not just about sensitivity or attention, it's the subconscious mind at work, responding to what truly matters even while the conscious mind is at rest. Take a countryman, used to the calm and quiet of rural life who finds it difficult to sleep when he first visits the noisy city. Yet, after a few nights, his subconscious adjusts, allowing him to sleep soundly despite the constant urban din. This is one of many ways our subconscious mind plays a pivotal role in connecting body and mind adapting us to our surroundings and shaping our responses to the world around us. The conscious mind may seem like the captain of the ship, but it's the subconscious that controls the deeper currents. Philosophers have long debated the relationship between mind and body. Is the mind merely a product of the body, or does the body serve the mind? The truth lies somewhere in between. The subconscious mind, unknown to these early thinkers, is the bridge between the two, with its influence extending beyond just the brain. It operates through the body's entire system, from muscles to nerves, every cell alive with energy and influence. Even Thomas Edison, the great scientist, believe that every part of us thinks in some form, and that nothing is truly dead matter, everything is living energy. For centuries, people have sensed the influence of their inner selves, though many may not have fully understood it. It is clear now that many aspects of our lives, from our health and wealth to the luck we seem to encounter, are reflections of the seeds we have sown deep within our subconscious. Whether we realize it or not, our subconscious has been hard at work, shaping our reality based on the experiences and thoughts we've buried there. It's a fundamental law of the universe, what we put into the subconscious mind is eventually reaped in our external lives. Today. Your life is the result of all the thoughts, emotions, and actions you've planted in your subconscious in the past. If you want to change your future, the key lies in understanding and altering what you're planting in your subconscious right now. The only way to cultivate a better tomorrow is by learning what's growing in your mind today, removing the unhelpful seeds and planting the ones that will bear the fruit you desire. This is not a new idea, but it has been expressed by countless great minds throughout history. Many famous artists, musicians, 
and leaders have spoken about the mysterious force within them that guides their creative and intellectual efforts. Great composers often describe their work as something that came to them rather than something they consciously created. Poets, orators, and ministers alike have said the same, their best ideas don't come from careful planning or conscious effort, but arise from some deeper, subconscious place. What's the difference between the few who achieve greatness and the rest of us? It's not that genius is rare, it's that most people have not learned to clear the clutter from their subconscious minds. Their mental machinery is clogged with old thoughts, fears, and distractions, preventing them from accessing the deeper well of creativity and insight that lies within. It's like a car engine running with faulty cylinders and rusty gears. No wonder progress feels slow or stunted. Many of us live lives that are split between two selves, much like the famous literary character Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. One part of us strives for one thing, while another part pulls us in the opposite direction. This internal conflict creates disorganization, chaos, and a lack of focus. Success and happiness require a unified self, one where both the conscious and subconscious minds work in harmony toward a common goal. But many people don't see the danger in living double lives. They may feel proud of their ability to present one face to the world while concealing their true thoughts and feelings. A man might attend a social event, acting cheerful and engaged while secretly disliking the company and the event itself. Later, he complains to his wife about the insufferable bore of the evening. Society, he believes, demands this kind of duplicity. And to some extent, he's right. But there's a cost to this kind of insincerity. Over time, the divide between his outward actions and his inner truth damages his sense of self, disintegrating his consciousness. The subconscious mind is constantly at work, even when we're trying to hide our true feelings. It's like a vast network of irrigation channels, with every muscle and nerve acting as a valve, allowing water, or truth, to flow through. We might be able to control a few of these valves, our eyes, mouth, or voice, but there are far too many to monitor all at once. Sooner or later, something slips through, revealing the truth we were trying to conceal. In this way, the subconscious is always betraying us, whether we realize it or not. It's a force that can't be entirely controlled, and trying to lead double lives will inevitably lead to breakdowns and slips. The key to living authentically and successfully lies in aligning your inner self with your outer actions. When the conscious and subconscious minds are in harmony, you present a unified self to the world, a self that can move forward with confidence and clarity. Recent advances in the field of psychology and mental science have shed new light on how the subconscious works and how we've been sabotaging ourselves without realizing it. We've been poisoning our own wells, so to speak, filling our subconscious with negativity, doubt, and fear when what we really need is mental stimulation and encouragement. But now that we understand these processes, we can begin to reverse them. We can start to feed our subconscious minds with thoughts and emotions that will help us achieve the life we want. 
This new understanding of the mind is a practical, personal science. It's not abstract or academic, it's about dealing with the problems we face every day, in a way that makes sense and leads to tangible results. The goal is to simplify these concepts so that they can immediately begin to help you navigate your own inner world, improving your life in real and meaningful ways. The subconscious mind is a powerful ally but only if we learn to work with it. It shapes our thoughts, feelings, and actions in ways we're often unaware of. By bringing more of its processes into the light of conscious awareness, we can start to reshape our lives from the inside out. It's a journey of self-discovery and transformation, one that requires honesty, patience, and a willingness to dig deep into the parts of ourselves we've long ignored. In this way, we can begin to take control of our futures, aligning our deepest desires with our actions and becoming the unified, whole people we were always meant to be. As we walk through life, our thoughts and emotions often seem like unexplored landscapes, shaping our world in ways we don't always understand. The mind is powerful, yes, but how often do we pause to consider the deeper forces within us, forces that guide our successes, failures, joys, and sorrows? We've all heard the saying, we get what we prepare for, a notion once highlighted by Albert Hubbard. Yet, how many of us truly understand this concept? Most of us think of external preparation, working hard, gathering resources, but we overlook the role our mind plays in creating our reality. It's easy to attribute our happiness or unhappiness to external factors. People often stumble through life unaware that they are their own source of both joy and misery. Whether you're conscious of it or not, the outcomes in your life are largely the result of how you have programmed your mind. Ignorance of these mental laws doesn't excuse anyone from their effects. The laws of the mind are as divine and immutable as physical laws like gravity. And just like gravity, they apply whether you understand them or not. Those who align themselves with these mental laws succeed, while those who violate them, intentionally or unintentionally, suffer. The question we should all be asking is, how do these mental laws operate? And more importantly, how can we use them to consciously plant seeds that will lead to the life we want? In today's fast-paced world, we often miss these vital truths. We're not taught how the mind works, nor are we educated on how to use it effectively. Our schools teach us about the world, but rarely do they teach us about ourselves. Understanding our own minds is crucial if we want to gain control over our lives. Skepticism often meets such ideas, especially because people tend to resist what they don't immediately understand. It's a human trait to oppose new ideas, to cling to familiar thoughts, and to give ourselves easy excuses when we fail. Yet, the reality is that human progress comes from challenging the old ways of thinking and embracing new ideas about consciousness and self-awareness. History is filled with examples of this, from scientific breakthroughs to social reforms. We're on the cusp of another revolution, one focused on understanding the inner workings of the human mind. Human beings are still in the early stages of development when it comes to self-awareness. 
A few hundred years from now, our descendants will look back at us as primitive beings, much the way we view our prehistoric ancestors. The key to this ongoing evolution lies in the expansion of our consciousness, in our ability to understand and control the mind. Superior minds create superior lives. It's not a matter of fate or genetics, it's a matter of mental organization, control, and understanding. Why haven't we been taught these things? The truth is that our society hasn't prioritized mental education. Parents, busy with the demands of everyday life, focus on feeding their children's physical needs leaving little time to address the workings of the mind. Schools and religious institutions, burdened by their own limitations, rarely delve into the complexities of mental development. As a result, many of us grow up with outdated, second-hand beliefs, can ideas, if you will, that don't serve us in modern life. These ideas often do more harm than good, leaving us ill-prepared to face the challenges of adulthood. One of the most damaging falsehoods we've been taught is that success comes solely from hard work. While effort is essential, it's not the whole picture. Some of the hardest working people, from laborers to clerks, barely scrape by despite their dedication. Meanwhile, others who appear to exert little physical effort achieve great wealth and success. What's the difference? It lies in how each person uses their mind. The truth is that the secret of success doesn't lie in grueling effort or sheer willpower. Rather, it stems from the harmonious cooperation between the conscious and subconscious minds. Those who succeed have, knowingly or not, aligned their mental faculties with the natural laws of the mind. Those who fail often do so because they've ignored or violated these same laws. The subconscious is a powerful force, and when used properly, it can unlock limitless potential. Your subconscious mind is a vast reservoir of strength, courage, and energy. It operates continuously, shaping your actions and thoughts, even when you're unaware of it. The role of the subconscious is to externalize your desires, to manifest your inner self into the physical world. From the moment you're born until the moment you die, this part of your mind is constantly striving to help you become the truest, most successful version of yourself. It works tirelessly to bring you freedom, happiness, and self-expression. However, not everyone harnesses the power of the subconscious effectively. Many people go through life unaware of the tremendous energy that lies within them. The key to unlocking this potential is understanding that every human being has a supreme subconscious wish, a deep desire that drives their entire life. Whether it's a craving for success, love, power, or peace, this wish is the core of who we are. Those who are most successful in life are the ones who understand their supreme wish and align their actions accordingly. Each of us builds our life around this central desire, and understanding this can explain many of the strange contradictions we encounter in life. It explains why some seemingly mediocre individuals achieve extraordinary things while others with great potential flounder. The most successful people in the world know their own minds, and this self-awareness is what propels them forward. 
Importantly, tapping into your subconscious doesn't require strenuous effort. The subconscious is already organized and ready to work for you. It's like a river flowing toward the sea, there's no need to push it. All it requires is direction. It's been working on your behalf since the day you were born, and it will continue to do so. It doesn't need encouragement, only guidance. Imagine your subconscious mind as a highly trained racehorse. It's ready and eager to run, but it needs you to take the reins and steer it in the right direction. Without proper guidance, it will still run, but it may take you to places you never intended to go. With conscious direction, however, it will lead you straight to your goals. So how do you take control? It starts with awareness. You must first become aware of the thoughts, beliefs, and desires that are currently driving your subconscious mind. Once you understand what's at work beneath the surface, you can begin to guide it more effectively. It's about setting clear intentions and aligning your conscious desires with the deeper wishes of your subconscious. In the end, the journey towards success and happiness is an internal one. It's not about fighting external forces or working yourself to the bone. It's about understanding and utilizing the incredible power of your own mind. When you align your conscious and subconscious thoughts, when you know your deepest desires and act in harmony with them, success becomes inevitable. You stop fighting against yourself, and everything starts to fall into place. It's a common experience, feeling that you're stuck, that you're not living up to your potential. Society, education, and even the people closest to us often reinforce this feeling by suppressing our natural instincts and spontaneity. This pressure builds up until it feels like there's no escape, driving some to lash out violently, whether in their personal lives or even on a larger scale through war and conflict. If we could better understand ourselves and the forces driving us, Perhaps we could live more harmoniously with others, but more importantly, with ourselves. Before we can ever hope to truly grow or improve, it's crucial to first clear out the mental clutter. Many people, in an attempt to escape from themselves, immerse themselves in distractions, whether it's endless entertainment, indulgence in vices, or other forms of temporary escapism. But this approach never works in the long run. No matter what temporary thrill you chase, you always end up back in the same place, confronting the same unresolved issues within yourself. In fact, trying to escape often leaves you worse off than before. The excitement wears off and you're left with a deeper awareness of your dissatisfaction. A common piece of advice is to forget yourself and focus on helping others. While this is undoubtedly valuable, it's easier said than done. True selflessness can't happen until you've addressed your own inner struggles. Otherwise, any attempt to serve others may just be another form of running away from your problems. It's like trying to sail a ship without first making sure it's seaworthy, eventually, the cracks will show, and you'll find yourself sinking. One of the greatest influences on our actions is our subconscious mind, a powerful force that either supports or resists everything we do. If your subconscious is aligned with your true desires, you'll find yourself able to tackle even the most difficult tasks with energy and enthusiasm. On the other hand, 
when you're working against your subconscious, everything feels heavy and exhausting. That's why some days, even the smallest tasks feel like a burden, while other days you can work for hours without tiring. Take, for example, a young woman who dislikes doing household chores. She may drag her feet when helping around the house, but when her significant other is around, she might suddenly find herself eager to assist with cooking and cleaning. What's changed? It's not the task itself, but the motivation behind it. Her subconscious is now engaged because it sees the chore as a way to impress someone she cares about. The same principle explains why we can easily remember the names and details of people we're interested in, but struggle to recall those we're indifferent to. When our subconscious is invested in something, it becomes easy to do, when it's not, even simple tasks become a chore. If you're enjoying this audiobook and finding value in the content, we kindly ask you to take a moment to subscribe to the channel. A large portion of our listeners and viewers haven't subscribed yet, and by doing so, you'll help us grow and continue bringing you more high-quality audiobooks. Your support means a lot to us, and it's just one click away. So, go ahead and hit that subscribe button to stay connected and never miss out on our latest releases. This leads to an important question, if the subconscious is so powerful, why aren't we all living the lives we dream of? Why do we fail to achieve our deepest desires? The answer lies in the fact that many of us unknowingly violate the laws of the subconscious. Just as there are laws governing the physical world, like gravity, there are laws that govern our mental and emotional lives. When we align with these laws, we succeed. When we ignore or contradict them, we struggle. One of the first steps to harnessing the power of your subconscious is to free it from the limitations you've imposed on it over the years. From a young age, we are conditioned to think in certain ways, often restricting our potential without even realizing it. You must release these mental shackles and allow your subconscious to work for you, not against you. Every successful person in history, whether consciously or unconsciously, learned to tap into this inner voice and let it guide them. It's also important to understand that no one and nothing is truly against you. The obstacles and hardships you face are largely the result of your own thinking. What you call bad luck or unfortunate circumstances is often the outcome of negative thought patterns you've held on to for years. Conversely, what some people call good luck is often the result of positive thinking and subconscious alignment with their goals. The key is to change your thinking now so that you can create better circumstances for yourself in the future. To visualize the role of your subconscious, imagine an enormous ocean liner. From the shore, you can see the ship's upper decks, passengers, and waving flags. But beneath the surface lies the bulk of the ship, the cargo, the engines, the workers keeping everything running. The upper decks may seem important, but the real power comes from below where the unseen machinery propels the ship forward. In the same way, the part of you that people see, your appearance, actions, and words, is only a small fraction of who you are. The true power lies in your subconscious, which determines your direction in life and how far you'll go. Dreams offer a fascinating glimpse into this hidden part of ourselves. Every dream, no matter how strange or seemingly random, is an expression of a desire that has been suppressed or unfulfilled in waking life. 
modern psychology has revealed that our dreams are a way for the subconscious to communicate with us, revealing our deepest wishes and fears. Understanding your dreams can provide valuable insight into what you truly want from life, even if those desires have been buried beneath layers of social conditioning or personal doubt. For example, think back to a time when you dreamed about doing something you weren't able to do in real life. Maybe it was flying, or confronting someone, or achieving a goal that felt out of reach. These dreams are more than just random images, they're the subconscious showing you what you truly long for. By paying attention to your dreams, you can begin to uncover those hidden desires and take steps toward fulfilling them in your waking life. Ultimately, the journey toward self-improvement and success begins within. You must first become aware of the patterns and beliefs that have been holding you back. Then, by aligning your conscious mind with your subconscious desires, you can begin to move forward with confidence and purpose. It's not about working harder or pushing yourself beyond your limits, it's about working smarter, using the incredible power of your mind to achieve the life you truly want. This process may not happen overnight, but with patience and persistence, you'll find that the subconscious is a reliable and powerful ally. Once you harness its potential, you'll be amazed at what you can accomplish. You'll find that life becomes easier, more enjoyable, and filled with possibilities you never thought possible. The journey may be long, but it's a journey well worth taking. Dreams often present an idealized or exaggerated version of reality reflecting our deepest desires and longings in ways that reality cannot. When people go to bed hungry, they frequently dream of extravagant feasts filled with their favorite foods. Those who retire thirsty may dream of cool, refreshing drinks, envisioning everything from pitchers of ice water to goblets of their preferred beverages. This is because our dreams often manifest the very things we crave in our waking lives, but cannot attain. A friend of mine, a woman who homesteaded a dry farm in Montana, once shared how she would repeatedly dream of discovering a beautiful spring on her land whenever her thirst and longing for water became overwhelming. Dreams act as outlets for these repressed desires. They show us doing things that, in our waking state, we may never allow ourselves to contemplate. The subconscious, which governs our dreams, doesn't adhere to the same moral or ethical constraints as our conscious mind. It's not uncommon to dream of actions or scenarios that we might find reprehensible in our daily lives. This doesn't mean we're immoral or unethical, instead, it means that our subconscious is working through desires that our waking selves either suppress or are unaware of. In fact, the fact that we dream of certain actions may actually be evidence that we are not acting on these impulses in our daily lives. Our dreams serve as a way to release and process the emotions and desires we have to stifle when awake. In essence, we all live two distinct lives, one external and visible to the world, and one internal hidden from everyone else. The outer life consists of our actions, words, and behaviors, the aspects of ourselves that are on display. People judge us based on this outer life, believing they understand who we are based on what we do and say. However, 
most of us harbor an inner life that is far richer and more complex than anyone else could imagine. This inner life is filled with thoughts, desires, ambitions, and dreams that are rarely, if ever, shared with others. It's here that our true self resides, the part of us that remains untouched by the judgments of society. In this internal world, we have aspirations, hopes, and even faults that no one else sees. We hold ideals of beauty, justice, and compassion. We dream of helping others, of contributing to society in ways that might seem unrealistic or too lofty to those around us. This inner life is both our sanctuary and our prison, while it protects us from external judgment, it can also leave us feeling isolated, misunderstood, and disconnected from the world. When Shakespeare said that all the world's a stage and we're merely players, he wasn't far off. Every day, we perform roles required by the circumstances of our lives. Our conscious mind, which controls only about 10% of our mental activity, directs this performance. It's responsible for our actions, decisions, and the part we play in the daily drama of life. Whether it's our social interactions, professional duties, or responsibilities as family members, much of what we do is influenced by societal expectations. These roles require us to act in ways that may not always align with our true selves. We say things we don't mean, act in ways that aren't authentic, and often hide our true feelings for the sake of maintaining harmony or avoiding conflict. When we sleep, however, this performance ceases. The other 90% of our mind, the subconscious, takes over, and with it comes a different kind of stage, one where we are free to be ourselves without the constraints of social norms or expectations. In our dreams, we are often the stars of our own stories. We're admired, powerful, influential, and important in ways that we may never experience in real life. The subconscious, unburdened by the rules of the conscious world, allows us to live out these fantasies without judgment or inhibition. In these moments, our real self, the one stifled by the pressures of daily life, is free to emerge. Dreams operate outside the limitations of reality. There are no laws, rules, or regulations to follow, no societal expectations to meet. They transport us back to a more primitive state of being, where instincts and desires reign supreme. In this dream world, we're not bound by the limitations that govern our waking lives. We fight for what we want without hesitation or fear of consequences. This explains why our dreams are often filled with raw, instinctual behavior, fighting, fleeing, chasing after desires with an intensity that we rarely display in waking life. This primal nature of dreams is also reflected in how we experience them. Dreams are primarily visual, with images and scenarios unfolding like a movie in our minds. The senses of hearing, taste, touch, and smell are secondary in dreams, likely because, in the early stages of human evolution, sight was the most important sense for survival. While we may occasionally hear sounds, taste food, or feel textures in our dreams, these experiences are much less frequent compared to the vivid visual imagery that dominates most of our dreaming life. The subconscious often throws obstacles in our way during dreams, not to frustrate us, 
but to provide our egos with the satisfaction of overcoming them. This is particularly true in the dreams of Americans, who tend to equate success with the ability to overcome difficulties. This pattern has emerged from analyzing the dreams of hundreds of individuals from various cultures. One striking example comes from a conversation I had with a world-famous opera star. She was traveling incognito in California at the time, seeking a few days of peace and quiet away from her adoring fans. She shared a dream with me that perfectly illustrated this point. As a child, she had always been consumed by the desire to become a famous singer. Despite being an unattractive girl from a poverty-stricken family, she constantly pictured herself performing on grand stages, receiving the admiration and applause of thousands. This deep desire, which had been with her since childhood, fueled her determination and eventually became a reality. In her dream, she relived the struggles she had faced on her journey to stardom, but with a twist. Instead of the real-life challenges of poverty and self-doubt, her dream presented more fantastical obstacles that she had to overcome to achieve her goal. In this dream world, the ego, the part of her that craved recognition and success, created difficulties so that it could take pride in defeating them. This is the nature of dreams, they are both an escape from reality and a reflection of it. They allow us to explore our deepest desires and confront our greatest fears in a way that our conscious minds cannot. They provide insight into who we are beneath the surface, revealing the parts of ourselves that remain hidden during the day. By paying attention to our dreams, we can gain a better understanding of our subconscious desires and learn how to align them with our waking lives. In conclusion, our dreams are a window into the subconscious mind, a place where our deepest desires and hidden fears are given free reign. While the conscious mind governs our daily lives, shaping our actions to fit societal expectations, the subconscious mind operates without such restrictions. By exploring the content of our dreams and understanding the desires they reveal, we can begin to bridge the gap between our waking and dreaming selves, ultimately leading to a more integrated and fulfilling life. The duality of life between our waking moments and our subconscious plays out vividly in dreams. Experiences in the waking world can often feel muted compared to the vibrancy and intensity of the dreamscape. For instance, those deprived of basic needs, like food and water, often dream of lavish feasts or cool springs. This subconscious longing speaks to the deep desires we suppress or are unable to fulfill in the real world. Dreams become a sanctuary for these repressed emotions, allowing the mind to explore scenarios that are either impossible or socially unacceptable in waking life. Take, for example, the act of dreaming about things one would never consciously entertain. Whether for ethical or moral reasons, the waking mind keeps certain impulses at bay. But in the privacy of the dream world, these suppressed desires surface. This isn't a cause for shame or guilt, instead, it's a reflection of the natural human condition. We carry with us unfulfilled desires that the conscious mind keeps hidden. When the conscious mind rests, these desires can take the stage. The nature of these dreams suggests that the actions we refrain from in real life find an outlet in the subconscious, and the dreaming mind plays out these scenarios, allowing for some form of emotional release. Human beings live two distinct lives, 
the outer life, which is visible to the world, and the inner life, filled with thoughts, desires, and aspirations that often remain concealed. Many people can relate to the feeling of having thoughts, ambitions, and dreams that no one else knows about. There are ideals, hopes, and visions for the future that remain private, known only to oneself. At the same time, people carry faults and insecurities they keep hidden from others, fearing judgment or misunderstanding. The world sees only the outer, conscious self, the part of us that interacts with society, follows social norms, and adheres to expectations. This outer self is an actor on a stage, playing the part that life demands. The conscious mind takes charge, guiding actions, words, and behaviors to fit the roles we play in everyday life. Whether at work, in social settings, or in familial roles, this outer self conforms to the expectations placed upon it. Society, friends, family, and work all require a certain persona, and this is the self that people know. But the inner self, the one that emerges in dreams, is quite different. When consciousness fades into sleep, the subconscious takes over. The submerged self, free from the restraints of social norms and expectations, expresses desires and fantasies that have been kept in check. In the dream world, everything is as we wish it to be. There, we can become powerful, influential, beautiful, or heroic. The limitations of reality no longer apply. The subconscious mind is the star of this inner drama, where we shape the narrative and direct the outcomes to align with our deepest desires. In dreams, we are often unrestrained by the laws and social constructs that govern waking life. Dreaming allows us to return to a more primitive state, where desires reign supreme, and there are no rules to limit our behavior. The dreamer is free to act out desires that would be unthinkable in waking life, without fear of judgment or consequences. The mind becomes a playground where anything is possible. This sense of freedom is especially apparent in the absence of conventional boundaries. The dream self can fight for what it wants, disregarding any social or moral rules that would normally prevent such actions. Dreams often reflect a more primal version of the self, one that is governed by basic instincts rather than the refined self that society requires during the day. It's interesting to note that we dream predominantly in pictures. The visual sense is the most developed in dreams, likely a throwback to a time when survival relied on keen observation of the environment. Other senses, like hearing, touch, taste, and smell, play a lesser role in dreams. While they might occasionally surface, the dream world is primarily a visual experience. It's as if the subconscious mind crafts a moving picture in which the dreamer takes center stage, shaping the narrative around personal desires and fears. The dream experience is not just a reflection of desires, but also of challenges. Obstacles in dreams often arise, but not as barriers meant to stop us. Instead, they serve as opportunities for the dreamer's ego to triumph. In particular, people from societies that value overcoming hardship, like Americans, 
may dream of challenges that mirror real-life struggles, only to conquer them in the dream. These dreams provide a psychological space where success and mastery over difficulties can be experienced, feeding the ego's need for validation. A poignant example of how dreams reflect the waking self is the story of a famous opera star who once dreamed of tending chickens and caring for babies, two things she despised in her waking life. The star, while traveling incognito, experienced inferior treatment from hotel staff, which wounded her ego. In real life, People typically treat her with deference because of her fame, but not knowing her identity, the hotel staff treated her like any other guest. That night, the opera star dreamed of being assigned menial tasks by the same people who had slighted her in the hotel. She was asked to look after chickens and babies, chores she had loathed as a child. In the dream, she complied but let chaos ensue, allowing the chickens to ruin the garden and the babies to become dirty and covered in mud. When the hotel staff returned and began scolding her, the star triumphantly pointed to the sky, where her name blazed in lights. The staff was mortified, realizing they had mistreated a world-famous star. The opera star's subconscious exacted revenge through the dream, allowing her to experience a sense of superiority and satisfaction that had been denied in her waking life. This dream highlights the function of dreams as a form of psychological resolution. The star's wounded ego found relief in the dream world where she was able to turn the tables on those who had disrespected her. The dream allowed her to assert her true identity and achieve a sense of revenge and triumph, even though she could not do so in waking life. The imagery in the opera star's dream was deeply symbolic. The chickens and babies represented the humiliating tasks she had been forced to endure in her youth, which resurfaced in her dream as symbols of the humiliation she felt at the hands of the hotel staff. The blazing name in the sky was a powerful symbol of her fame and success, which in real life protects her from such disrespect. The dream was a coherent narrative that addressed the emotional turmoil she had experienced during the day, offering a sense of closure and resolution. In conclusion, dreams are a fascinating reflection of the subconscious mind. They allow us to explore desires, fears, and unresolved emotions that we might not be able to confront in waking life. Dreams serve as a psychological outlet for the inner self, providing a space where we can achieve what is denied to us in reality. Whether through triumphing over obstacles or gaining revenge on those who wrong us, dreams give the subconscious mind a chance to express itself in ways that are both liberating and revealing. The human mind is a fascinating, complex entity, constantly processing and storing experiences, thoughts, and emotions. As we go about our daily lives, we're often only consciously aware of a small fraction of this mental activity. But when we sleep, something remarkable happens, our subconscious takes the stage utilizing the vast storage of images and memories tucked away in our minds to craft vivid, surreal experiences that we call dreams. These dreams are not random, they are intricately connected to our desires, fears, and the events we encounter in our waking hours. To better understand the nature of dreams, 
it's essential to explore how the subconscious mind operates and the symbolic language it uses. During our waking hours, we're constantly bombarded with stimuli, sights, sounds, tasks, and conversations. Our conscious mind has to filter out much of this information, focusing only on what's most relevant to the present moment. However, while our conscious mind is preoccupied with the day's demands, our subconscious is quietly at work, absorbing everything and filing it away. This includes not only our immediate experiences but also our emotional responses and deeper desires. It's this vast repository of memories, emotions, and associations that the subconscious draws upon when creating dreams. One of the most striking aspects of dreams is their ability to take seemingly ordinary events from our day and transform them into something extraordinary. While the starting point of a dream might be rooted in a real experience, a conversation, an argument, or even something as mundane as running errands, the dream quickly departs from reality, introducing new elements, often in the form of symbols. These symbols, which may seem nonsensical at first glance, are the subconscious mind's way of communicating with us. Take, for instance, a dream where a person finds themselves in an old house, a setting that holds no obvious connection to their recent life. Upon reflection, however, they might realize that the house symbolizes a past experience or emotion they've been subconsciously holding on to. The subconscious doesn't always communicate in straightforward terms, instead, it uses images and symbols that have personal significance, often rooted in childhood or formative years. A house in a dream might represent safety, confinement, or a particular phase in life, depending on the individual's past associations with such a setting. The subconscious mind is highly emotional and non-linear. It doesn't reason in the same way the conscious mind does, nor does it adhere to the rules of logic or time. That's why in dreams, we can experience scenarios that would be impossible in waking life, like talking to a deceased loved one, flying, or being in two places at once. In the dream world, emotions often take precedence over facts, and the subconscious simplifies complex experiences into their emotional essence. It's not concerned with accuracy or realism, Instead, it focuses on how things feel. For example, let's say someone has a dream about missing a train. On the surface, this might seem like a simple reflection of anxiety about time management or fear of missing an opportunity. But upon closer examination, the train could represent a larger life goal or an important milestone and the act of missing it could symbolize a deeper fear of failure or being left behind. The dream is a metaphorical way of processing these fears, using symbols that the dreamer's subconscious has filed away over time. Dreams don't just help us process fears or anxieties, they can also offer a sense of resolution or empowerment. In many cases, Dreams allow us to rewrite the events of the day in a way that's more aligned with our subconscious desires. Perhaps you've had a frustrating interaction with someone at work, where you felt powerless or disrespected. That night, you might dream of a scenario where you stand up to that person or demonstrate your value in some grand, dramatic fashion. 
The subconscious, aware of your desire for validation, creates a dream where you can experience that validation, even if it eluded you in waking life. This ability of the subconscious to craft satisfying outcomes through dreams is especially pronounced in people who are driven by ambition or who have strong desires for success. For instance, a highly accomplished person might dream of being in a situation where they're treated as ordinary or overlooked, only for their true identity to be revealed in a moment of triumph. The dream allows them to experience both the frustration of being undervalued and the catharsis of being recognized for their greatness. This type of dream mirrors the individual's real-life experiences and desires, playing out a fantasy where the ego is vindicated. The symbolism in dreams is not always easy to decipher, but it's incredibly personal. Every symbol, every image, carries a specific meaning unique to the dreamer, shaped by their individual life experiences. While one person might dream of water as a symbol of peace or emotional cleansing, another might see it as a representation of danger or drowning. These associations are formed early in life and become embedded in the subconscious, where they are stored like old photographs in a newspaper's archive, waiting to be pulled out and used when needed. The analogy of the subconscious mind as a vast archive or morgue is particularly apartment. Just as a newspaper's archive contains photos, articles, and other material from past editions, ready to be referenced or repurposed when a related story breaks, so too does the subconscious hold on to memories and emotions from past experiences. When something happens in waking life that resonates with a past experience, whether it's an achievement, a failure, or an emotional encounter, the subconscious pulls from its archive, using those old images and emotions to construct a dream that reflects the current situation. This is why dreams can feel both familiar and strange at the same time. They draw on real memories and emotions but combine them in ways that defy logic. A dream might take place in a childhood home, but the people in the dream could be co-workers from a current job or the setting might morph from a familiar neighborhood into an entirely fantastical landscape. The subconscious blends old and new, creating a narrative that speaks to the dreamer's inner world. Despite the surreal nature of dreams, they are deeply connected to our waking lives. Each dream is rooted in a recent experience or emotional response, even if the connection isn't immediately obvious. And while we may not remember every dream in detail, the subconscious mind is constantly at work, processing the events of the day and using dreams as a way to sort through emotions, desires, and fears. The act of dreaming is a vital part of the human experience, offering insight into the workings of the subconscious mind. Dreams allow us to explore parts of ourselves that we might not fully understand in waking life. They provide a window into our deepest desires and fears, giving us the opportunity to confront, resolve, or even rewrite the events that shape our emotional landscape. In conclusion, the subconscious mind is a powerful force that shapes our dreams, using symbols and images drawn from our personal experiences. These dreams serve as a reflection of our inner selves, offering a unique space where we can explore our desires, fears, and unresolved emotions. Though dreams may seem mysterious or nonsensical on the surface, they are deeply rooted in our waking lives, offering valuable insight into the workings of the mind. 
Dreams are often a window into the deeper recesses of the human mind, serving as a reflection of our subconscious desires, fears, and unresolved emotions. The things we dream about, whether they are objects, people, or situations, aren't always direct representations of our waking reality. Instead, they are symbolic manifestations, rooted in our personal experiences and shaped by the emotional resonance we assign to them. When we dream of something that we consciously dislike or are indifferent to, there is often a deeper, hidden desire at play. Understanding these dream symbols can reveal the innermost workings of our minds. In many cases, elements of a dream that seem undesirable or irrelevant to the conscious mind are in fact representations of something deeply desired by the subconscious. This phenomenon is encapsulated by the law of symbols, which suggests that seemingly unwanted or negative dream elements symbolize something that is, on a deeper level, desired by either the conscious or subconscious mind. Nightmares, for instance, are dreams where the symbols involved are not inherently pleasant, and the intensity of the dream's action becomes so overwhelming that it jolts the conscious mind awake. Consider the case of a nurse from San Francisco, whose recurring dream became a source of distress and physical exhaustion. She worked long hours, was physically drained, and, each time she drifted off to sleep, even for a brief moment, she would dream the same unsettling scenario. In her dream, she found herself at the foot of a bed in the hospital ward, where she had witnessed many deaths. A familiar screen would loom up in her dream, marking the final moments of a patient's life. Yet, in this case, it wasn't a stranger lying on the bed, it was a doctor she once worked with, who appeared to be in the throes of death, begging her for help. Every time she tried to save him, the dream would abruptly end, only to begin again. The nurse's dream, which had recurred so often that it became an obsession, was a manifestation of her subconscious mind processing her deeper emotional conflicts. With the help of analysis, it became clear that the deathbed scene had become a symbol of something she longed for, a subconscious desire that had taken shape in her mind, though she was unwilling to consciously admit it. The nurse had, despite her best efforts to remain professional, fallen in love with the very doctor she dreamed of. He had left the hospital some months prior and moved to another city. The last time she had seen him, they had worked together during a deathbed scene, and this memory had been burned into her subconscious. Her subconscious mind, longing for connection with this man, constructed a dream where she could be with him once again. The scenario of trying to save him reflected her desire to endear herself to him, to take care of him in a way that would make him feel emotionally connected to her. She subconsciously wished to occupy the role of the doctor's wife, being the one to care for and save him in a moment of need. Once she acknowledged that her dreams were not premonitions of his death, but rather a reflection of her own subconscious desires, the dream stopped recurring, and she quickly recovered her emotional and physical balance. Another intriguing example is a recurring dream experienced by a woman for over 25 years. In this dream, she found herself climbing over massive boulders, navigating deep ravines, and scaling craggy mountain peaks. Far below her, 
a rushing river roared over jagged rocks, posing a constant threat. Yet, despite the dangers of the terrain, she was never truly afraid of falling. She wore heavy, sturdy mountain shoes that allowed her to maintain a sure footing as she ascended the mountainside. Her companion in this dream was none other than William Jennings Bryan, the famous orator and politician, who walked beside her in a friendly and courteous manner. Though he never physically helped her, they conversed pleasantly as they continued their climb. As they navigated the treacherous path, other people joined their party, and she and Mr. Bryan frequently called down to these climbers, offering them guidance and encouragement. The others climbed rapidly, grateful for the guidance they received. The woman, dressed simply in brown, and Mr. Bryan, carrying a bouquet of sixteen different wildflowers, pressed on towards the summit. She, in turn, carried an armful of dark red flowers known as bleeding hearts. Upon closer examination, this dream was symbolic from beginning to end, offering a clear reflection of the woman's subconscious wishes. Having grown up in the rugged, mountainous regions of the Rocky Mountains, she had long associated mountains with her ambitions. Her ultimate goal was to be a great orator, much like Brian, whom she had first heard of during his presidential campaign in 1896. Brian, in this dream, symbolized her oratorical ambition the heights she wished to reach. Despite the many years she had spent living in large cities and the success she had achieved as a public speaker, the symbols in her dreams never changed. The mountains remained a constant representation of her aspirations. The sixteen different flowers carried by Mr. Bryan were a direct reference to Bryan's famous political slogan, 16 to 1, which he used during his campaign for monetary reform. This playful detail underscored the importance of Bryan's influence on her subconscious. However, the most significant symbol in this dream was the bleeding heart flowers that she carried. These flowers represented the emotional weight she bore, the deep longing and unresolved desires associated with her lifelong ambition to be a great orator. Though she had become a well-known speaker, filling large auditoriums with eager audiences, her dream continued because she had not fully realized her ultimate goal. The act of climbing the mountain, step by step, over treacherous terrain, symbolized her ongoing journey towards achieving her ambition. Her subconscious mind kept the dream alive because she had yet to experience the complete fulfillment of her desires. The dream represented not only her professional ambitions, but also the emotional toll of striving for something just out of reach. In both the nurse's and the speaker's dreams, the subconscious mind used symbols to communicate deep desires that the conscious mind either ignored or misunderstood. Whether it's a nurse dreaming of saving a doctor as a way to fulfill her unspoken romantic desires, or a woman climbing mountains alongside a famous orator, these dreams offer a unique glimpse into the psyche. The subconscious employs symbols drawn from personal experiences, emotions, and desires, creating intricate narratives that serve as a form of communication with the self. Understanding the symbolic nature of dreams is crucial in unlocking their meaning.
Every image, every action within a dream, holds a specific significance tied to the dreamer's inner world. While the conscious mind may dismiss these dreams as irrelevant or nonsensical, the subconscious mind weaves them into complex stories that reflect the dreamer's deepest wishes and fears. By analyzing these symbols and recognizing their connection to waking life, we can gain insight into the underlying emotional currents that shape our thoughts, actions, and dreams. Her early years were painted with the hues of struggle, a canvas marred by the harsh realities faced by those who carved their lives out in the rugged landscapes of the mountains. Growing up in poverty, she became acutely aware of the silent suffering around her. Every broken heart echoed her own, and she identified with the struggles of others, especially those facing similar hardships. The resilience of the mountain dwellers resonated deeply with her, and she found herself yearning to uplift those around her, channeling her ambition through the art of oratory. The wildflowers that grew in abundance on the mountain slopes, particularly the poignant bleeding hearts, served as a profound symbol of her empathy. These flowers reminded her of the fragility of life and the emotional weight carried by those enduring adversity. Her longing to help the less fortunate was intertwined with her own ambitions, leading her to envision a future where her voice could inspire and empower others. Even as she carved a path toward her dreams, she continued to experience recurring dreams that reflected her inner struggles. In these dreams, she found herself scaling the steep heights of her ambitions, always accompanied by the figure of William Jennings Bryan, a symbol of her oratorical aspirations. Together, they navigated rocky terrain, lending support to those climbing alongside them. This image encapsulated her relentless drive to rise above her circumstances and to assist others in doing the same. Though she achieved significant milestones in her journey, the essence of her dreams remained unchanged. The struggle to reach the summit was a constant theme, emphasizing that her ascent was not merely about personal success, but also about the collective progress of those she sought to uplift. With every climb, she felt the weight of their burdens, symbolized by the flowers they carried, reminders that while their loads were heavy, progress was still possible. In these dreams, the canyon represented the fear of failure. Yet, her sturdy mountain shoes grounded her, a metaphor for her unwavering belief in the foundation she had built for herself. The shoes provided her with stability, assuring her that she would not fall. They signified her commitment to the scientific principles that underpinned her teachings and her confidence in the knowledge she shared with others. Each step was deliberate, reinforcing the idea that her hard work and determination had fortified her resolve. Her attire, a simple brown serge, symbolized the ideals she held dear simplicity and authenticity. She valued the straightforwardness of her message and the sincerity behind her ambitions. The dreams were not burdensome, rather, they invigorated her spirit, providing just enough challenge to test her resolve and stimulate her courage. They served as a reminder that, despite her achievements, the peak of her ambitions had yet to be reached. Rather than seeking to escape these dreams, she embraced them, recognizing their role in her journey. 
they became a source of motivation, a continual reminder of her greatest aspirations. The consistent imagery of climbing and striving echoed the universal human experience of ambition and growth, reinforcing her belief that the path to fulfillment is one marked by both struggle and triumph. Ultimately, her dreams encapsulated her lifelong quest to rise above her beginnings and to bring others along with her on this arduous yet rewarding journey. Copyright 2024 by Audiobooks Tube. Thank you for listening. Please consider to subscribe, like, and share to help the channel growth. New videos on a daily basis.